Humanity as we know it is at a crossroads. Since the last ice age, over 12,000 years ago, we have gradually established our civilization on this planet. But in terms of how far we've gone, we are still children on the cosmic scale. If the human race were a person, we'd basically be about 12 or 13 years old. Teenagers gradually realizing that the world we live in is part of a vast galactic network. And just like teenagers, we have begun to understand that the world is a bigger place than we thought it was. With this realization comes a new age of expansion. Our eyes are opening to fantastic new ideas and possibilities. These ideas could one day be the bedrock for which humanity will finally spread out to the universe on a voyage of discovery. But there's a catch. In order for us to make that leap to the stars and beyond, we have to first improve ourselves because the stars, although breathtaking to behold, would be unforgiving to our weak and fragile bodies. Now before we continue, I'd like you all to know I make new videos on Thursdays and Sundays every week. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more great content. When I mentioned crossroads earlier, I was referring to the number of ways we could possibly achieve this accelerated evolution. We already discussed one path we could follow towards achieving our goal in the first transhumanism video. That episode showed us how it could be possible by bringing man and machine together. But today, we'll discuss how we could achieve such evolution by natural or biological means. Today, people looking for an extra edge in school or sports tend to turn to some form of performance enhancing drug. Athletes, even famous ones, have been caught using steroids or some other drug to enhance their physical attributes. Students and even Silicon Valley executives have been known to use different kinds of nootropics. These so-called cognitive enhancers are said to increase productivity and sharpen focus without the side effects of a prescription drug like Adderall. Given the fact that our society currently values mental speed and agility, it won't be long until such drugs catch on to the mainstream, especially once they become accepted by medical professionals. While the fictional character known as Wolverine is famous for his claws and manly sideburns, his primary mutant power is his accelerated healing factor. This means his body can regenerate damaged or destroyed tissue faster than is possible in ordinary humans. So what if I told you that real-life non-mutant humans like you and I could capture a bit of Wolverine's rapid healing power? Certain phytochemicals which are basically chemicals derived from plants tend to have amazing healing properties when applied to complex biological organisms. A study was carried out by researchers on the impact of one such phytochemical on a group of wounded mice. The phytochemical was derived from the leaves of Calancho petitana, which are used locally in Ethiopia for healing bone fractures, sores and even wounds. After the study was concluded, the researchers found that the leaves possessed remarkable wound healing traits and were able to accelerate cellular repair in the injured areas of the mice within days. Although such natural herbs are not globally accepted as treatments for injuries, that will inevitably change as more people learn of what they can do. In a nutshell, we could very well see a future where people take a mix of these drugs to maintain peak physical and mental condition indefinitely. Sort of like Jean-Claude Van Damme in the movie Universal Soldier. Although the solutions we've mentioned thus far would substantially improve our physical and mental conditions, they have one problem, which is a lack of permanence. Simply put, no one would choose a daily drug intake to achieve superhuman enhancements when they could be born with these enhancements off the bat. This is where gene editing comes in. Some of you may know CRISPR, the gene editing system derived from bacteria that enables scientists to edit the DNA of living organisms. So far, this tool has been used to successfully create the first genetically modified human embryo in the United States. And that was just scratching the surface. The potential of CRISPR is simply limitless as it allows us to easily hack the source code of all living organisms. In the future, this tool could be used to create custom designed superhumans who would be immune to all known diseases and age much slower than the rest of us mere mortals. Considering what this could mean for us as a species, a very relevant quote comes to mind. With great power comes great responsibility. 
Simply put, we need to make sure in our quest to better ourselves, we do not unwittingly doom our entire race. In Greek mythology, the Chimera is a monstrous fire-breathing creature, typically described as having the head of a lion, a snake as a tail, and the head of a goat emerging from its back. Just as this mythical creature terrorized the minds of the Greeks, so has the idea of human-animal hybrids been the source of much anxiety in the scientific community and society at large. You see, most of us are like six-year-olds who turn their nose up to the idea of mixing their broccoli with their mashed potatoes. We simply like to keep things pure. This idea stems from the very human belief that things have certain necessary properties that are essential to them being what they are. The only problem is, biology doesn't follow this idea. We are all made of different combinations of the same kind of stuff, like proteins and amino acids. Even much of our human DNA is shared across other species. For example, humans share around 90% of our DNA with mice and about 35% with the simple roundworm. Early last year, an international team of researchers led by the Salk Institute announced that they had created the first successful human-pig hybrid. The purpose of this hybrid was to grow custom organs in a pig which could then be used by people who needed them. Currently, there are two ways of making a hybrid. The first of which is to introduce the organs of one animal into another. A risky proposition as the host's immune system may reject the organ entirely. And then there's the second method which begins at the embryonic level. Introducing one animal's cell into the embryo of another and letting them grow together into a hybrid. In the future, our understanding of genetic modification could allow us not only combine the DNA of different species, but also select specific genetic traits from a potential hybrid partner while suppressing the unwanted bits. Think Spider-Man, but instead of being bitten by a spider in high school, his DNA was spliced with that of an arachnid while he was still just an embryo. If you think about it, Every genetic trait needed by humanity to survive a journey through the stars could be found in one animal, plant, or microbe on Earth. The question is, are we bold enough to tap into it?